Welcome back to 340 Paddler and another episode of Lidkey's Foibles. In this case, what happens when you stop eating on the 340? Now to set things up, it is 2012, day one of the 340, and something you should understand about 2012, it was hot. Every day of the 340 that year, we had highs in the triple digits. And the problem is I'm from Wisconsin, the great north, where if it gets over minus 20, we feel that we need to wear shorts and a parka because that's appropriate wear around here. So this is going to be a significant problem. I'm not used to the heat at this point. The worst that we see in Wisconsin is maybe 90 degrees with half the humidity that you have in Missouri. We don't see 104 degrees. You see where this is going. So let's get into our story. I get to Lexington. It's rough, but I get there. That last mile and a half when I'm expecting 50 miles and it's 51 and a half nearly killed me. I pull in, I ate a couple of bites of a burger that my ground crew had gotten for me there at Lexington. And this would be almost the last that I eat for the rest of the, well, for a large portion of the race. The problem is I had stopped eating. And I make this very difficult run, or what for me was a difficult run, into Waverly. At this point, I'm hot. Things are just bad. It's about four in the afternoon. I'll make Waverly sometime around seven-ish. Uh, it's bad. And this is where things go from bad to worse. Because I had been suffering so much that I had stopped eating. In fact, I had also stopped drinking, which my ground crew yelled at me when I had gone through an entire one liter of fluids by Lexington. And after I stopped eating, every time I tried to eat, things got bad. Nausea kicked in. It was a very bad experience. So for the next 36 hours, my diet consisted entirely of watermelon, boost shakes, and Pepto-Bismol tablets. You can imagine how wonderful that was and how good my experience was for that time. So how long does that last? That lasted all the way to Jefferson City, at which point this is the morning of day three. My ground crew couldn't make it to Jefferson City, and I found the Mystic Biscuit. In 2012, they had a little cart there that was selling biscuit, uh, sausage biscuits. And for some reason, this sausage biscuit was the best thing I had ever eaten. It's about noon, well, between 10 and noon on day three, and I kept it down. No nausea. I felt so much better. It was incredible. So how do you avoid this issue? Well, the moral of the story here is you need to eat and drink continuously through the race. In fact, many people will use a timer or just keep an eye on a watch, something like that, where you're going to drink something every 20 minutes, just a sip. You're not trying to drink a gallon of water or anything like that. You don't want hyponatremia. But also you want to make sure that you're eating something, maybe a couple of bites of a Cliff's Bar or something like that every hour. If you go to a full liquid diet, your body may not accept digestion because your body is trying to shut down your stomach during events like this. It's trying to use that blood elsewhere. By keeping a little something in your stomach, you keep it active, you keep that fire burning without overwhelming it. You also don't want to eat too much at one sitting. So this has been Lidkey's Foibles and 340 Paddler. I'm hoping that you keep your paddle in the water.